Well, hello, strange people. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're out for a hike today. It's Amanda and Patch. And uh, we're just going to go up to Great Staple Tour, have some lunch, a cup of coffee and a bit of a chit-chat. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm dressed like a Daglo Derek today, it's because I am in the mood for a rant and I don't particularly care what I look like today. Um, I'll bring you back in a minute. You can see why Staple Tour, my granny always used to call it the gateway to the moor and I've heard a few other people use it since. So I don't suppose for one minute she invented that. But um, I mean it's, it's not quite the gateway. It's the gateway possibly to the North Moor those two pillars that are there and there look like gateposts so you can see why it's called that but just beyond just beyond over there we've got the south moor and uh, the north moor is extending over there we were going to go up Roost Tour, but there's a lot of people up there. And over there we've got Great Mist Tour. And from there it's just barren. <laughs> Beautiful, but barren. Right, we're going to carry on our way up to uh, Staple Tour. Catch you in a moment. In my last video I said that when we do hikes, what we'll do is uh, do a little bit of history. And uh, so I thought I might as well start with going back to the start. A Dartmoor was formed, give or take a day or two, 290 million years ago. Feral time. Uh, I think Keith Richards might even have been a young man at the time. And uh, there's always noisy people on this tour. It's a popular tour. It's not far from there, from the road. I don't know if you can see the road in the distance behind me down in the valley, but it's not far from the road. And it's always people here. It's a brilliant tour to camp on. This spot that we're on at the moment is perfectly level. It's. Uh, Amanda's just setting up for us to eat. Um, it's perfectly level and it's quite well protected from the wind and everything, so it's a lovely spot. Well, the noisy beggars seem to have moved on for a bit. Right, so Dartmoor was formed about 290 million years ago. It, uh, it's the largest area of granite outcrop in southern England and this this outcrop it is the most easterly um, from here on in down through Cornwall and you can't see it today because it's it's quite misty up here today and there's a really thick mist moving in from the north I've just noticed so uh, It could be the, there's a cold front coming in and that could be the cold front, I suppose. So yeah, it's um, the largest outcrop of the granite. There are outcrops of granite all the way down through Cornwall now. I was brought up on one at Kid Hill. Uh, Bodmin Moor is the second biggest outcrop. Uh, that's a little further on down. And then there are several more uh, until you reach the Scilly Isles, which is the last outcrop there. For those who don't know, the Scilly Isles are a group of islands uh, off the west coast, 20, I'd like to say about 20, 22 miles off the Cornish coast. Absolutely beautiful place. What a beautiful place. If you ever get a chance to go to the Scilly Isles, it's like a little tropical paradise. It's beautiful. So what happened with Dartmoor when it was formed we had this 
layer of upland uh, made of uh, the Devonian rocks and uh, brain freeze. I can't remember the other rocks now. Uh, and underneath there was a molten layer of granite. And as the granite cooled, it started to fold and form into cracks and everything. And if you look here, you can see some perfect cracks from the granite as it cooled. Um, over, over time, with rain and the acidity of the soil above, that actually made the cracks bigger and the rocks, rocks over there, where are they? Over there, you can actually see that they've actually formed into single rocks, especially at the top up there. And there's one just around there somewhere. I can't remember. I'm terrible at this bit. But there's one there that is just seemingly hanging on, just hanging on. So that is what forms the clip clitters, because eventually with the ice and the rain, the rain falls, it turns into ice, and it starts to split the rock apart. Obviously, the ice expands, and it starts to, and over millions of years. And when I say millions of years, I'll tell you how long these have been actually above ground in a second. But that forms of millions of years, and of course the clitters, which are scree slopes, basically, form, and that's why you get all the rocks going down the slopes of the tours. It's hard doing all of this from memory. <laughs> anyway, so uh, these tours that you see around, bear in mind the moor is 290 million years old. These tours are around about 45 to 50,000 years old. That's how long they've been sticking out above the uh, above the surrounding soil. So you can only imagine how how tall. I'm having to use the, give the lighter to the young lady here because she's uh, unable to use the ferro rod to start the fuel, which is not surprising. It's only three degrees up here. Um, it's probably actually a bit less than that. It's, you may have seen in, in my startup, we've still got ice everywhere, so it's probably a little bit less up here. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, 45,000 years old. So, uh, and of course, with the ice and the rain splitting them, and that's why you get these beautiful, beautiful rock formations. Um, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, Great Mist Tour, which is which is over there, much higher than this one. Some beautiful rock formations on that one, and it's got basins as well, Mistor Basin, if you can ever get up and find that, it's uh, quite a little sight to see. So it's basically a basin that's been worn away by the acidity on the rocks. I don't know if there is one on uh, Staple Tour. I'm not 100% sure, there may be maybe one on the stacks. I don't know, I don't know. I'd be surprised if there wasn't one on the stacks. So yeah, that's basically a very basic uh, history of Dartmoor from its beginning. Now those horrible little girls have gone away, it's quite peaceful up here. Catch you in a mo. So something else I forgot to mention is Dartmoor is the largest and highest area of upland in southern Britain, southern Britain, southern England. And uh, it's also 
the largest area of unglaciated upland in uh, Great Britain. Um, although that is contentious because fairly recently they did find striations in rocks and try saying that with my accent. Um, but sort of look like the sort of thing that uh, a glacier would have left behind. So it's possible that some early glacier uh, glaciation has happened on the moors. Anyone who's ever been to Dartmoor will know it's pretty wet. And uh, it supplies roughly 45% of all the water used in the southwest, which is uh, a lot of water. Just looking out across the moor now, and this, what I think is the cold front, is really starting to come in now. I don't know if you can see the mist over there, but uh, that was clear half an hour ago. And as Amanda said, it's getting really quite chilly now. So uh, I think that's probably the cold front on its way in. The top of Great Mist Tour over there, where is it? It's now been obliterated by the mist. Looks beautiful, but I wouldn't like to be up there at this very minute. We're quite a bit lower than they are, so uh, should be a while before it reaches us. Hope so. Oh, we've got hot dogs on at the moment. Just down there, somewhere, cooking away. We got a cup of hot coffee to keep us going for a minute. Catch you in a mo. Right, I said I was going to have a bit of a rant, so I'm going to have a bit of a rant. Uh, last week's video, I jokingly said that uh, welcome to the only outdoor channel in the UK now without a Hover Air X1. Um, that was just a joke. Uh, the few videos I've seen with people that have got them, God, I hate this hat. Uh, they they look like a great piece of kit, and in all honesty, I did actually think about buying one. Um, not for using on the moors, but for using when I go canoeing. I just thought it would be. I'm a technophobe. And the fact you can just program it and fly it without a phone or anything like that or any kind of controller just seemed brilliant to me. But um, thanks to Novice Wild Camper who mentioned that you can't use it over water, it saved me a lot of money. Uh, so I decided not to get one. The reason is because you're not allowed to use drones on Dartmoor. As part of the bylaws, you can't use the drone on a national park. Now I happened to come across uh, a video a few days ago in which a young man was flying his drone. Now, he was out for a camp, it was in the summer, he was out for a camp, uh, he was in the camping zone and I didn't take an awful lot of notice of it. Uh, it's easy to miss some of the bylaws if you don't read them properly maybe or you just sort of skip through them so it's easy to miss them and he's not the first that's used a drone up here but I came across another video of his now I'm going to just give you a few of the little tips about coming to Dartmoor and just camping on Dartmoor. It's a great idea to go to the National Park website and see where you can actually legally camp on Dartmoor and I'll come back to that in a second. Um, it's marked in sort of purple on the map and it's very easy to follow. 
The other thing you want to do is, especially on the North Moors or definitely on the North Moors, is check the firing times for the military. Uh, there are three ranges on Dartmoor. Uh, they're all on the North Moor and uh, you don't want to wake up with flashbangs and soldiers and helicopters and half tracks and things coming at you. South Moor, it's fine. The military do train on the South Moor and you may wake up with the sound of blanks going off. I certainly have. Um, but, you know, that's not such a problem. They're not not as invested. Mostly the South Moor is for uh, navigation and yomping and that kind of thing, beasting the troops. Um, you're not allowed to have fires on the moor, which uh, certainly in the summer and the spring is a pretty obvious thing. The, the moor can be tinder dry, absolutely tinder dry, and we are not far from the fire season now, so it's a good job, uh, or a good idea that if you uh, are having a stove or an alcohol stove like I use, you either do it on a rock or um, you may have seen that I sometimes use a bit of felt underneath. Um, just something to protect the, the ground. I know some people use tin foil. Just something, you know, to protect to make sure it's level and that kind of thing. Um, you've got to camp within the camping zone. You're not allowed to have fires. So, Imagine my surprise when I came across another one of this chap's videos in which he's gone out over the Christmas period in one of the storms we've had and uh, not far from where Amanda and I went for a walk last week he's camped in the woods which there are woods on Dartmoor you are allowed to camp on and you'd have to look at the camping map to see them but these woods are not so he's camped on in the in off the camping map. He's then gone off with what well, a knife that Crocodile Dundee would have been jealous of. This huge Bowie style knife. And he's hacking away at trees in the wood with this knife. Which is totally out of order and in my opinion is probably criminal damage, certainly on the National Park. And then he's got a firebox out and he's lit a fire and he's cooking on this firebox, which is also illegal according to the um, bylaws on the moor. Now, these things, they're just not good for, for a, it's not a good look for people that are camping on the moor. He's obviously not read the bylaws, he's obviously not looked at the the website and I'm so tempted to name and shame this channel um, I know some people that follow me on Facebook have actually discovered him I've reported him to the National Park and they've, they've uh, told me that they've been the the report has been passed on to the relative officers whether they'll do the relevant officers whether they'll do anything or not I don't know I wouldn't normally do this kind of thing, but this week, Mr. Alexander Dickhead Darwall has um, been given permission to take his case to the Court of, uh, not the Court of Appeal, sorry, the, um, not the High Court, was it the Supreme Court? It's the highest court in the land. Um, this is to do with the camping ban on Dartmoor. Um, if he succeeds, that'll be it. If his if his case succeeds, that will be it. There's, as far as I know, there is no further courts we can go to, or the national park can go to, or anybody else can go to. I don't know whether they can go to Europe. I'm not sure, but I I don't know. I don't know whether it's whether you could call camping a human right. I don't know. But, um, I mean, it's the Supreme Court. This man must be thinking that he can make millions off Dartmoor, off his area of Dartmoor, 
if he's willing to take this case to the Supreme Court. Because if he loses, it's going to cost tens of, probably hundreds of thousands, I would imagine. I don't know. So his concern over Dartmoor is only to do with his wallet. As far as I'm concerned, he's the most hated man in Devon, in my opinion. But videos like this, that this jerk has put up, showing fires, showing, showing camping off the, the, the camping zone, destroying trees, they're playing right into this dickhead's court, this dickhead Darwell's court. And it makes me mad, it makes me absolutely bloody furious. If you come across it, report it. Report this video. I'm not going to name him and shame him, which I really should do. But if you come across this video, report him. We need it taken down. We really do. YouTube won't take it down. But it needs to be taken down. And we really, really, everybody that comes to Dartmoor, whether you live here, whether you come out for the city for a day trip, whether you've travelled half the length of the country to come and enjoy the beauty. I mean, it really is beautiful here. If you've come to enjoy the beauty of Dartmoor, the peace of Dartmoor, and camp on Dartmoor, and, and just be at one with nature, please, please, please follow the rules. They're not that restrictive. They're not that hard to follow. If I've managed to do it pretty much my whole life now, I'm sure you can do it for a weekend or a week, whatever. Anyway, rant over. Hopefully from now on I'm not going to come across any more of these videos that I have to report. Because he's, he's not ruining it for himself, he's ruining it for everybody that enjoys the moors. And everybody, and to be honest, in a lot of ways, everybody that enjoys wild camping anywhere. Tidy up, leave no trace. But for God's sake, if you're on the National Park, follow the bylaws. It's very simple. Right. It is getting bloody cold here now. can't see my breath, you can see the dog and, and Amanda's breath over there, but you can't see my breath here, but it is starting to come in very cold. The mist is really starting to roll in now. I can, you know, the, the rock formation over there, you can see the mist rolling in through that. So it really is time for us to get off the hills. Get home, get warm. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. You don't have to subscribe, but if you like this, hit the like button. Leave a comment in the bottom below, and I'll try and get back to you. I oh, nearly always do. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Anything you've got to say? Home time. Catch you on the next one.